The transform SOP comes with some local variables that can be used to automate some of its behaviors. The first thing we're going to automate is this option that says move centroid to origin. When we press this, this script manually takes the centroid of the incoming geometry here, negates that, and then puts that in the translate and pivot translate parameters, which moves the geometry such that its in, out incoming centroid is placed at the origin of this object. Let's automate that. So the way to do that is we're going to use the local variable dollar sign CEX, CEY, and CEZ, which returns the centroid of the incoming geometry, in this case negating it, CEY minus dollar sign CEZ, and now we can see that we get the exact same result as when we move the set, press the move to centroid to origin option. And as we saw with the script, we're going to copy this parameter and paste relative reference or paste the actual expressions in the pivot translate as well. Now with the shader ball translate, you can see we can move it wherever we want. And we've automated and locked down this transform so that all the geometry, no matter, is placed at the origin. This is really handy for when we're applying transforms to for each blocks and we need to work with everything at the origin, for example. Second thing we can do, though, is we can, nail, we can actually lock the base of this geometry at the origin in the y direction. As we can see, it's now intersected in half. And the way we can do that is we can add half of the bounding box in y back. And that's accessed using dollar sign size y. Size y returns the size of the bounding box in y, and we simply divide that by two or half. So basically, we're telling it move it up half of the height of the bounding box. And once we do that, going back to our shader ball, now we can we can change the height, and it has absolutely no effect on the size as well. Another thing we can do is apply a secondary transform, which will then take this geometry and make it unit scale. So let's add another transform SOP. And this transform SOP is simply going to be used to scale it such that its height is 1. If we middle mouse on the first transform SOP, we can see the size is 0.95, 1.44, 1.079. 1 we can see that the Y is the largest component. So what we want to do is do 1 minus that size in the scale. So 1 pardon me, 1 divided by dollar sign size in y. So again, taking that bounding box in y, and then we hit enter. And now if we middle mouse on that transform, we can see that its scale in 1 is y, or the scale in y is 1. And we can also take that same value, we can take the same value, and paste relative channel reference, and same over here, relative channel reference. Now, if we middle mouse, we can see that it's in Y, but we've kept its unity scale. So we can go right back to the original shader ball, and again, change its scale. And now it's locked down to that ground plane, and we've made it unity scale, ready to do some really cool transformations. To see these local variables, we can turn to the help. Here's the help for the transform SOP. And you'll notice that there's a locals link. Press on that. And this takes you to the location where all the local variables for the transform SOP are. We can see there's centroid. The centroid of the geometry, if we specify a geometry group in the parameter, it will return the centroid of that. And also the x and x min and x max, the extents of the bounding box in x and y and in z, or the more convenient size parameters. With these, you can do an awful lot of automation with the transform SOP.